Now what this is, this is very traditionally, uh, well this is much older in history. This dates back thousands of years and when they mention the dulcimer in the Bible, this is what probably what they're talking about. Now what it boils down to is a raw form of the piano. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the inside of a piano torn out. And the way you play it is, well the way you play a piano is when you press keys, they trigger hammers inside the piano which strike the strings. Well with this instrument there's no keyboard. And what you do is you hold the hammer in your hand directly and you strike the string directly. And that's all there is to it. So basically you're drumming. Yeah, it's a percussive instrument, very rhythmic. It's, it's a great combination of rhythm and melody. Mm -hmm. You know, probably the ultimate. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful sounding instrument. I'll play you uh, another, another Irish uh, thing. This was written by the national composer of Ireland. His name is Turlock O'Carolan. He was a blind Irish harp player back in the 1600s and early 1700s. <clears throat> and he would write planksties or uh, he would write people or tunes that for people. And they would, in an exchange, you know, He'd be kind of like a little core composer for a while and then move on somewhere else and do it there, you know, in a sense. Mm -hmm. And he'd get free room and board and some bucks out of it, you know. So that was cool. But this was supposedly the first tune that he ever wrote, which is also in Gaelic, which I won't pronounce. So it dates back quite a few centuries. Yeah, this, well, this tune probably dates back to about 1630 uh, or 40 or 50, mm -hmm. back to the 1600s, so. And ain't no spring chicken, you know. And it's about uh, two fairy hills, a big fairy hill and a little fairy hill, and they talk to each other, you know. He's Irish. <laughs> but anyway, here it is. soothing instrument. It's very pretty it is. to listen to. It's pretty, isn't it? That's very uh, 
hypnotic. I mean, this instrument will grab a hold of you by the throat and won't let you go. Do you have a favorite instrument yourself? Um, well, it's either this or the fiddle. Yeah. Not necessarily the way I play them, but. Uh, mm -hmm. You, uh, like you, like you say, you've done a lot of traveling, met mm -hmm. a lot of people. Name, give me, <clears throat> who, who has taught you the most? What have you come across any fiddlers who uh, any? Well, John McCutcheon, who you're aware of, sure, and who most people are aware of these days, uh, taught me a lot. Uh, I used to go to this workshop in West Virginia, Augusta Heritage Arts and Elkins, and John used to teach up there and got to know him pretty well and. Matter of fact, his dulce, hammer dulcimer was the first I ever played on. Oh, really? Yeah, he had a big, huge box. Same guy that built this, built that one. Malcolm Dalglish. John seems to be doing great. I know he was, a, <clears throat> I mean, everyone starts off obscure, and his albums were always very good, but he's he's coming into his own pretty good. He's yeah, he's uh, getting pretty well known and stuff, which all power to him. I think he deserves it. He's, he's a great guy and a, some unbelievable energy behind that man, you know. Yeah. But uh, other than that, uh, the, I learned a lot from old guys, you know, like Burl Hammonds, who we talked about. Mm -hmm. the these guys, I mean, I never heard of these guys. Well, and most of these people you probably never have, you know. Yeah. Of course, Mike Seeger uh, did a lot to influence me, Pete's younger half-brother. Have you met Mike? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? I know Mike. and You know, I can drop names, but I don't like doing that stuff. But I find that fascinating. I mean, it's... That's one of the things I really enjoy about folk music is that you can travel with your instrument and and automatically you're you're in the, in the circle. You're friends with people yeah. who play well, the instrument. Yeah, well, it's funny because you know a lot of these tunes. It's such an underground network of old timey musicians, and we all know pretty much like the same tunes and maybe different variations. Mm. So no matter you know you, you run into someone like for the first time and you can always you can just sit down and play music together. You that's, know, it's wonderful. That's yeah. a thrill. How many songs do you think you know? I'm asking him. Probably a hard question. Songs and tunes, or songs. Yeah, or? Uh, songs and tunes. Yeah, what? Oh it? gosh. Well, there's been a lot that I knew that I don't remember now. Yeah. You know, I wish I did. I would say, you know, I don't know, maybe a thousand. That's know. yeah, yeah. It's it's hard. Nowadays, it's, I probably know about five. <laughs> yeah. It also amazes me. It's like the tradition that's that's kept alive in folk music. How you can. You can be in the business for 25 years and then still come across songs that you never heard before that uh, True, people yeah. find. Let's well, thing about folk music is it's still here. Yes. You know, what else can you say uh, uh, disco music isn't and, uh, and uh, rap music won't be for long, you know? Mm. Break dancing is going out and all that stuff. But uh, folk music, except maybe in the 60s where it was hyped a lot mm. with hootenanny and all that stuff, it was it was never really uh, in the forefront or on the on the big commercial market, but it always remained. You know, it was always the, somewhere. There also seems to be a, a new type of folk singer where tr folk music is traditionally traditional music. Mm -hmm. There's also these folk singers who uh, who use the folk instruments, yet they have uh, created their own style. They've write mm -hmm. their own songs, and yeah. uh, it, well, that's that, sort of like a new tradition. You know, being born in a sense. Yeah, that's exciting. I do that so much. Like that record there, I've got some original things yeah. on it. Let me show this album. LJ uh, made an album a couple of years ago, and uh, most of it's traditional songs, but you also wrote a few tunes on the song. Mm -hmm. Do you write, do you do a lot of your own material? Not as much as I would like to. Uh -huh. You know, there's so many tunes that already exist that I'm, I'm spending my time trying to learn and figure out that. Uh, the album, uh, by the way, the album is available through the Dade County Cable Access Project and Folk Exposure, so mm -hmm. if anybody out there wants to purchase an album, feel free to get in touch with us here. Yeah, I'll even sign it for you, and you can try and try and try to peel that banjo off, you know, but right, you never yes. do it. You, uh, people do try to do I see. that. <laughs> you, thought maybe, uh, you thought maybe sex would try to sell the album, huh? Well, yeah. <laughs> That's nice. But another interesting thing about this instrument, if we may dwell on the hammer dulcimer for a minute, is, sure. is you can use different hammers to uh, get different sounds. Like this, I got just bare wood. Now I also have a pair of uh, felt hammers. They're little hammers lined with felt. Of course, these are awful worn out now, so you may not hear much difference, but there was a time when these provoked a, a much softer, subtler sound. You know, as compared to this. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> not much difference. But but you can line your your hammers with different material, like rubber or felt or leather. 
and you get a different sound. Uh -huh. I'll play another quick a little Irish thing with these on. Okay. They used to sound, they used to make a big difference. Let's, but let's just hold off a, about a minute or so because we're coming up to the end of the show. So oh, we'll, gosh, we'll go out the tune. Let okay. me just ask you, I wish you all the luck. You're living in Chicago now. Uh, you told me that you're performing there as well, and uh, mm -hmm. there's a much richer folk network up there than there is in Miami, and that's just the way it is. Are there any other instruments that you want to learn how to play? I'd love to learn the pipes, as we were talking about, yeah. and the harp, you know, the regular harp. Uh -huh. I mean, maybe a Gaelic harp, and I'd like to learn guitar better. You know, I play guitar some, but I'd like to get into more uh, John Hurt stuff and, and uh, Travis style picking, right. which, which I never really learned well. Great. Okay, and I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Folk Exposure today. Uh, tune in. Well, we'll be here. Okay, just uh, thanks for tuning in. Okay, <laughs> it's, uh, for more information about the show and uh, how to get albums that uh, of the artists that are here, feel free to right to the address that you see on the screen and uh, be happy to help you whichever way we can to keep folk music alive and LJ uh, what are you gonna play for us now to take us out well I was thinking of one thing but I think since we're exiting I'll play something else I'll play an, a Scottish tune called Flowers of Edinburgh and then I will go into a, uh, an American fiddle tune called Mississippi Sawyer okay okay thank you thank you Michael Okay.